All right, guys, welcome into the Dog Central Film Review Show. My name is Graham Coffey. As always, we are here to talk a little bit about Georgia football. Um, forgive me for not getting a show out last week. I was traveling cross country uh, with my wife. We uh, were at the game in Athens on Saturday, and now I am uh, – in North Carolina, seeing some family, we'll, we'll be out here in the Southeast for uh, basically the rest of football season. So we'll be back in Athens a few times. Um, got to meet some of you in person this week, and that was awesome. Just want to say thank you to everyone that I got to say hello to, and thank you to everyone that consumes this content. Um, so Georgia 51, Kentucky 13, this was the data point that we've all been waiting for. Right. Um, I said, going to this game, like, Hey, there's some things in the Kentucky uh, defense that I think Georgia can pick on, but until we see Georgia come out and have like that kind of alpha dog performance, I'm not going to predict, predict that they're going to do it. Um, of course, the one week where uh, I kind of was a little more conservative with my score prediction in our Thursday preview on dogcentral.com is the week that Georgia finally decides to show up and show out. Uh, you can thank me later for that one. But look, impressive, impressive, impressive. Um, before we get into the stream, I think a couple things I want to say. First and foremost, I loved covering Todd Monken because – uh, he made people like me look smart. And what I mean by that is that he always did what made sense. Okay. Like Todd Monken always would come out and whatever you saw on film from that team in the weeks prior as weaknesses that could be exploited, he would go and he would take advantage of those and he would play to his team strengths as well. But often what he did was, basically go out and say, whatever you're bad at, we're going to make you do it. And last week against Auburn, uh, I wrote in my Sunday 12 takeaways that, you know, I didn't really love how Mike Bobo came out and attacked Auburn. I don't think Georgia is a run first team. Um, they're they're They can be a good running team, but they need to pass to set up the run. And in that game, uh, they attacked the middle of Auburn's defensive line in the middle of Auburn's defensive line had given up like 2.5 yards of carry against Texas A&M the week before, but was given up tons of yards on the edges. So I felt like in general, kind of going back to the South Carolina game that when we'd seen Georgia play, uh, you know, better power five SEC kind of opponents that we had mostly seen them sort of slam their heads against the wall at times. Um, I don't think it was an issue of conservative play calling, but I, I did think it was like a little too man y and a little too much like we're going to impose our will instead of, hey, we're going to use our athletes and we're going to beat you. We're going to get those guys in space and we're going to make you run sideline to sideline. So with that in mind, uh, here's our first play from Saturday, right? And what does Bobo do right off the bat? He gets Georgia on the edge. He gets Dejan Edwards on the edge. Decent blocking, not great, but decent, right? Like, what do we talk about on this show? You don't have to pancake everybody on the perimeter if you're a tight end or a wide receiver. What you do have to do is get in the way. Good job by Edwards uh, forcing a missed tackle here. I liked that they got him involved in the passing game for the first time really all year. I believe he had six catches for 61 yards somewhere in that neighborhood. Um just a nice performance by him. And this was kind of what we saw Georgia do with Kenny McIntosh last year a lot was just, hey, if he runs out to the sideline and an inside linebacker doesn't follow him or doesn't follow him fast enough, we're going to toss it out there. This is pretty exposed. Uh, I don't know if it's – I think it's green maybe that's supposed to – well, no, that guy just kind of comes free. Uh, maybe it was Delps job i'm not sure either way plays like this are designed to get your players one-on-one -on -one and let them win one-on-one -on -one. and that's what edwards does uh slithery slithery back does a great job and georgia is able to start the game off with a nice like is it a chunk play is it explosive no but it's it's six or seven yards on first down 
And against Auburn, what you saw in that game was a lot of first down plays where Georgia was either getting negative yardage or one or two yards. And that versus, you know, second and eight versus second and six is just a very, very different world. And in this game, I thought you saw Georgia look really good on first down. Um, This game from a success rate standpoint, which is basically a measure of offensive efficiency in terms of staying on or ahead of schedule, uh, Georgia had a higher success rate in the first and second quarter of this game than they did in the national championship game against TCU. Like that's how good they were at staying on schedule Uh, here. Second and three. Oh, sorry. There we go. We're going to go backwards a little bit. Um, So there you get the Edwards play second and three. You get back on the move. We've talked about that some on here. Like, roll your pocket, help your offensive line out. Uh, the offensive line was much better in this game, for the record. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to that. But love getting the boundary guys involved early, right? Uh, we just How was the conversation? Too much, too much playing in a phone booth. How do you get out of the phone booth? Get the ball outside of the numbers. Uh, Carson Beck, 16 of his pass attempts in this game were outside the numbers, and a lot of those were deep outside the numbers. Um, He had not done that really all year. So Georgia very much spread the field in this game, forced Kentucky secondary to play on an island one-on-one and then forced their linebackers to run sideline to sideline, which, as it turns out, they're not super well designed for. Here, uh, good good job of spacing. And Bobo was awesome in this game with pre-snap motion um, and just little fakes. Like, you know, there were some more – I think like dramatic plays where they go play action and short yardage with heavy personnel and stuff, but um, just loved the pre-snap movement. And it was, it was kind of mocking esque in a lot of ways, but you see, love it here. Uh, again, one of these situations, is it an all world block? No, but that's going to work. Okay. That's going to get your guy into, you know, enough room. Ra Ra Thomas doesn't take space from number 23, but he does hold his own space. And, Yes, that guy ends up making the tackle, but he does it while Love it is, you know, coming downhill. So that's a nice gain, nine and a half yards. That dog will hunt for you on first down every time. Quickly, you're in second and one at midfield. That's a place where you can do lots of things, and you get a negative play here. Um, I thought that. Let's see, who do we get here? I think this is. This is Bowers or Green. I think that's on. I think it's actually on Brock. Um, no. Maybe that's on Rattledge. Um, Rattledge is hitting the deck there. So, yeah. It's tough to say. Uh, it, it's definitely off that right side in that kind of combo of. Uh, not Bauer, uh, not Green. I'm sorry, but uh, Truss or Ravage. That right side really struggled against Auburn, and then all of a sudden this week it seemed like they kind of figured things out. Not on that play, but that's this play right here is kind of the only one like it that you saw while this game was anywhere competitive. Um, Jordan did a really good job up front in the run game, and I think that was helped by the passing game. Here, okay, we're gonna go. Uh, I believe this is going to be your, your third and three touchdown play. And you're just – look at the overload on this right side, okay? So this is like almost like a double mesh kind of concept. You've got Bowers and uh, Ra Ra Thomas there, shallow. They're going to cross over each other. you got Dylan Bell. He's moving out on a wheel route. He's taking people with him, which is clearing out the middle of the field. And then – this underneath stuff, which is what Beck has had a tendency to throw all year. Look, two weeks ago, he throws this ball to Ra Ra Thomas right now. Okay. And maybe it's first down, maybe it's not. But in this game, he's gonna he's gonna actually end up scrambling here and let's Ra Ra take that defender out of the area that he needs to get to. This is a huge plus play. Okay. Like this is not gonna be something that people talk about on a Monday after a game or 
that shows up in the stat sheet very much. But when you talk about advanced stats and you talk about EPA and expected points added, like getting inside the 40 or close to the 40 is basically when a team enters scoring territory, making a third down play to keep a drive alive and bring it to the edge of scoring territory, which is what Carson Beck is doing here is a very large deal. So George is rolling here. Um, Beck's rolling. And then now you get Dejan going downhill. And look at this all of a sudden. Okay, so look at what you have here. You have three linemen that are two to four yards downfield all off the, the right side. So you got Truss, Tate Rattledge, and I'm sorry, uh, Fairchild is not off the li- uh, right side. He's your center. Or I'm sorry, he's your left guard. But still, um, this is work, okay? And this is what we didn't see very much of against Auburn was – some more, I think, kind of run designs that would allow this offensive line to take better advantage of their athleticism. And you see that here, okay? So we get get some action here at the snap, and you you got Oscar coming around on a little bit of a pull. You get these linemen moving upfield, and just seeing these guys at the second level was nice because we haven't seen that very much this year. Second and three, you go play action and you're going to get your shot play. And what's beautiful about this play is just Beck, look where his head is right now. Okay. He's off looking at the boundary at Ra Ra Thomas. So he's reading his boundary receivers first. He's reading his kind of go shots first. Um, that wasn't the case a couple of weeks ago. And then he's going to come back. He's going to let Ra Ra clear that space and come back and hit Rosemi. And just the, the timing of this was really impressive from Carson. Like he waited, let that clear. Um, you see this here. And on the front side, Georgia's got like, this is a, this is an RPO type of look. Okay. Um, let's go back. All right, so you see Ratledge at the snap. He's pulling, coming around. Like, linebackers see that, and they read run. And that is what allows these receivers to all of a sudden be behind that first level of the defense. And then from there, it's just speed and space, right? That safety cannot come down and cover Rosemi because if he does, Lovett's going to run past him. Like, this is beautiful play design by Mike Bobo. It's putting a lot of defenders in conflict. And this became a theme that we noticed some against Auburn. Even at UAB, there were some plays where Bobo basically, he's taken deep routes and he's running safeties off with those deep routes. And then he's running deep routes behind them. Basically he's running like extremely deep shots. I'm talking like 50, 40 to 60 yards downfield. And then he's running, you know, 25 to 35 yard routes behind those. And it's working very well. So George is up seven. nothing. we're going to do offense first and then defense today. George up seven, nothing second drive of the game. What do we do? We go back out to that boundary out to the right side. Um, this time you're going to Ra Ra Thomas. It felt like Thomas and Beck could could run this play as much as they wanted in this game. Like anytime they wanted to get eight to twelve yards off of like a, a deep curl stop route kind of concept, they had it. Really nice job from Thomas. Just like, hey, you're giving me space. I'm gonna take that space. Really good job from Beck of recognizing that space. Um, so screen concept here. Uh, Lad's going to miss his block on the bottom, uncharacteristic for him, but we know he's coming back from injury. You see him clap his hands there. He knows he did it. You don't have to yell at him for it, although I'm sure they will. Um, now you're back into these. So you saw a lot of these two running back sets, and I'm very excited to see how that progresses throughout this year because that is something that Georgia's – at some point they're going to do more off of those and they're going to run some pass routes off of them and different type of actions. And it's going to be interesting to watch. Uh, 
play action roll. Good job of Carson, you know, turns up a decent gain for a better gain. Um, you got Bowers in the flat. People pay attention to Bowers. What does that mean? It means you can come back inside, hit Delp. Nice seven-yard gain on second and eight. Third and one. Love this call. Okay, you're, you're play actioning and good pass protection by everybody. If that's a better thrown ball, it could be – it could have been, you know, a bigger game for Bowers maybe, but um, this is how it's done, you know, slip them out. Like, good job of getting the defense and stressing it. Um, first and 10 here. I love this call, you know, in the stadium. I was like, did Bobo just do what I think he did? So, very – a lot of people have been complaining about the amount of screens that Mike Bobo's ran. Um, this is, this is beautiful right here. Okay. So you get Dylan Bell, he's going to come and it looks like one of those kind of swing screens that, that they ran with love it on the first drive, right? Like Dylan Bell is coming in motion. We know that Dylan Bell is a guy that they like to get the ball in the hands of, um, you see, like, look at Kentucky's defender that is over the, that that's, that's kind of over like the he's in between the hash and the 30 yard line um or I'm sorry the the the, the number 30 but he's he's on the 31 yard line there like you see the heads all the heads are turned towards Dylan Bell in the middle of the field so these guys are thinking Dylan Bell is getting the football you see Kentucky's defender there the uh, biting at the top of your screen and what do they do? They slip this little tunnel screen in the back door behind him. And that guy's out leveraged himself. Okay. And then you got Ratledge coming up field. You've got Van Pran just flattened a guy right there. This is beautiful, beautiful concept. Look at Ratledge down there finishing a block. These are all exciting things to see. Really nice job. There you get it in full motion. Yeah, Cedric just, like, pancakes that kid. Um, and then first and 10. Look, good, smart, effective football. Dejan Edwards in space. That equals yardage. You get it. This is the beautiful toe-tap catch to Ra Ra Thomas. Um, what I love about this play is that this is an RPO for Beck, right? So just the confidence that he's gained here in this short period of time, like this can be a handoff if he wants it to be. And he sees his guy, he, you know, he's got a safety shaded kind of over the football, right? Like there's not, you're not in a true cover two kind of look where you've got safeties equal distance covering both halves of the field. And Beck's going to, Beck's going to pull it and take his shot, and it's beautiful. Like, that's trust in himself. That's trust in Ra Ra Thomas. Those are things that were not there for this offense not that long ago. Um, moving forward, yeah, this this play was disappointing. Uh, trust 73 is going to be the one that gets the the call that, that brings this back, and it was just so unnecessary. It's way behind the play. And there's no reason to do it. I was, you know, I don't even know if you see it down here, but he comes back, he peels back and basically blindside blocks the guy. Um, could have been a big gain, but what's impressive is that Georgia still managed to go march down there again after getting behind the chains with that penalty. Uh, this incomplete, but Beck really hangs in there, takes a hit. You like the – the willingness to step up in the pocket, the willingness to, to get hit, delivering the football. It's all good stuff. Um, Dejan Edwards just looked really good in this game to me. And part of that was having more room to run, but uh, you know, that's a, that's a nice play, not a, you know, exceptional play by the offensive line, but serviceable, right? Like there's a good hole there. Bowers is holding his space. You've got gap scheme happening um 
nice to see some gap scheme. Like we didn't see a ton of gap scheme uh, against Auburn. I believe they only ran six gap scheme plays. Most of them were more kind of toss concepts. And I think this offensive line blocks more effectively with gap scheme, or at least blocks more effectively when it has a nice balance of gap and zone. That's, that's kind of keeping defensive lines off balance. And they had that in this game. I thought it worked well for them. So would like to continue that 50 50 split between gap and zone was a big uh, kind of tenant of the 2021 and 2022 offenses under Monken. Georgia has been really heavy zone uh, prior to this game. And then in this game, they were exactly 50 50 zone versus gap running the football and design runs. So I think that's a good sign for how they're going to close the season. Uh, this, you know, this was uh, Kentucky was off the field there, and then they get that stupid late hit penalty, and Georgia makes them pay for it to their credit. Good to see Kendall Milton out there. I uh, had some bursts that I haven't seen out of him really at all. This like uh, you know he's not been fully healthy this year, and I'm not sure he's even fully healthy yet. But I thought this was the best that he's looked all year. So good cut there, and he's like you know he's following his blocks. Um, Good job by Ratledge getting getting upfield there, like finishing runs, pulling around. That's what you want to see. And the, Georgia did a really nice job with those kind of pin and pull concepts in this game. And Ratledge in particular stood out in terms of how he blocked those concepts. Like he was consistently downfield finishing runs and leading, leading uh, ball carriers into space. They're, you know, second and three. I know there's people that complain, like, oh, boo boo runs too many screens. Dude, that's easy yardage right there. Like, I'm all for a, a deep shot on second and three as well. You know, like, don't run that every time you're in second and short. But um, in that situation with the coverage that Kentucky was playing, that was, that was a smart play. You get your first down. Here, play action. Carson hangs in. This should have been caught. Um, this is a really nice delivery from Beck. Really good job off script. Arian does a good job coming back to the football, but just doesn't catch it. And, you know, that's that's becoming a theme for him, unfortunately. And if that continues, then he's going to play less and less. And he's already getting less and less reps than he was. I mean, week one, he was the most targeted wide receiver on the team but he had zero catches and it's just not something's not really clicking between him and Beck and they have, you've yet to really see them connect on a deep ball this year. They've thrown two to him. You know, one was the, the kind of drop situation against UAB. And then another one, he had a hard time fighting through coverage. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see what the rest of this year has in store for him. There's Kendall Milton. You know, I mean, it's those were kind of the like more minimal run type plays that Georgia had in this game. And just compared to what they were doing against Auburn, you know, having a four yard gain versus a no gain is such a massive difference. Free play, Beck knows it. Really, I mean, look at Rosemary right here. Just come back to this football. That dude catches everything that is thrown at him. Um, I was really impressed with him in this game. You know, four catches, 90-something yards. What you didn't know about that is that those four catches and all that yardage came on just 15 routes run. So uh, he had over seven yards per route run in this game, seven yards receiving per route run. Like, just really, really productive. And, I mean, if he – you know, him and Beck have some sort of chemistry there where Carson likes throwing the football to him. I like getting Arian back involved after the drop. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a good gain. Like, get him, you know, back into the, the play. And then this was close. That could have been a better throw from Beck, which we didn't say that much in this game, but that one – was one of those situations. Um, a really nice play here. Like, 
Lad is one of those guys that he can do this anytime he wants, almost. Like, you can run that play with him almost anytime, and he's going to he's gonna get you 10 yards. You see the route here. Nice job. Just sticks his foot in the ground, turns around. Ball is there. And he didn't play a lot in this game, but, I mean, going back to the Auburn game, having him back is just a very big deal for this offense because he he is kind of the lubricant for this whole thing. Like he keeps this offense on schedule and he helps this offense convert third downs in a way that uh, is, is just very hard to replace. Like he's just, his routes are sick. He just gets open. And if you play him in man coverage, he's going to route you up. So um, here you get a first and goal. He's just, I mean, that's just too easy for Georgia. Honestly, Really nice play design again. Um, you can see here just good play action, heavy personnel, Kentucky bites. And they bite on those a lot more when you're running the football effectively and efficiently. And that's what Georgia was doing early in this game. So good play get Oscar involved and good to see Oscar getting, getting some love. Um, I like Georgia using him kind of slipping him out the back door like that as an inline. This was sick as well. Um, just a lot of pre-snap motion. You got, you got love it coming on an orbit motion. And then you have basically a play action situation to cash Jones that's a lot for a linebacker or a safety to look at. You see the linebackers kind of biting down on that, watching it. And then Beck's just going to fire away. Brock, you know, that, that's part of how Brock gets that open on this play. I mean, it's still a coverage bust by Kentucky, but coverage bust, they, they don't have, none of these things happen in a vacuum, you know. Uh, these guys rarely are just standing there watching some guy run by them. Like they don't glitch, you know, they, they let guys run by them because their eyes are pulled away onto other things. And that's what all of that action in the backfield can do for you. So really nice job here. And yeah, 29 bites. And the, that is that Brock Bowers remains a baby rhino. Um, Love this play, okay? Like, is it a co completion or a touchdown pass? No, but I love Georgia threatening defenses downfield, taking deep shots. Carson Beck had 11 throws, uh, 11 attempts of over 20 yards in this game. Like, that is that is stretching the field. That is stressing a defense, and it, it paid dividends in all other facets of the game. It rarely – with especially with a quarterback that you trust to protect the football and a good offensive line and pass protection, it, it rarely is a bad thing to be aggressive. It almost always works out in your favor. Um, so, I mean, that, that run by Dajan, three yards in the stat sheet, but, like, dude, he had six missed tackles forced in this game on – I think just like 11 carries uh, and then to go with the, you know, or maybe it was, what was, what was his line? Let me pull that up real quick. Sorry guys. Asian. All right. So Edwards. Nine carries, 54 yards. Um, so six yards in attempt, that's very efficient. It's very effective. And you couple that with, you know, six catches for uh, about 50 yards as well. And you end up in a spot where you're talking about over 100 total yards for him. It's, it's just like that's what you want to get out of him and – Getting 100 yards out of him on basically 15 touches is – that's good. That That's effective. That will work for you. This was a perfect ball by Carson. Um, I was I was sitting in a spot where I had a really good angle on this throw, 
and it's just a drop from Brock. I mean, it happens. He's the last guy that we're going to talk about. You know, oh, he's got to figure that out. Like, it happens, especially when you target a guy that much. Drops are going to happen from time to time. It's a tough catch. Like, even if he made it, it would have been a, a very good catch. But it's a catch that you're used to seeing him make. Love seeing Georgia get downhill like this. And this is what happens. Like, they stretched Kentucky early in this game sideline to sideline. And that was my kind of critique of the run game at Auburn was like Georgia was trying to go heavy personnel, two tight ends like this. You know, they they were trying to run big tight formations and slam it up the A gaps and the B gaps like right off the bat when they hadn't really established anything. And I think it cost them the flow early in that Auburn game. And in this game, you see them like, they work the outside, they work the outside, they work the outside, and then all of a sudden, look what's open. And this is not a complicated concept. Um, this is actually, you know, like, this is kind of, this is basically RPO blocking here. I mean, your tackles are are basically pass blocking right now. And Carson rightfully hands this ball off. You see... I believe that's Fairchild. Yeah, Fairchild played a really nice game, by the way, on Saturday night at left guard. Uh, him and Micah Morris both. They they both split snaps. But, like, boom, all of a sudden you're busting 11, 12 yards up the gut. That's good stuff. First and 10, fading back. And this is going to be a really nice play to Roseme. So I think we have a, another angle on this. And what I want you to notice is remember earlier we were talking about deep routes kind of opening up other deep routes. That's exactly what's going to happen here. Watch Ra Ra Thomas. He is going to occupy the safety plus his man. And all of a sudden, Rosemi's in space. He doesn't occupy, you know, I mean, that safety doesn't run downfield with Ra Ra for – three seconds or anything, but like he rah-rah runs straight at his face, which is I'm sure what he's probably coached to do. And by doing that, you've got Roseme enough space to, to basically just run like a deep stop route and turn around and, and see the football. So Bobo's doing this a lot and it's, it's going to be a problem for actually, I'm sorry, I shouldn't call that a deep stop route. That was kind of the, an out and up sort of situation, but, um, Bobo's doing that a lot and it's working. And it's, it's also like we just talked about stressing the defense. Like when your safeties have to run and cover 40 yards downfield, every play over and over, like that is, it's just, it's creates space for everything else. And it creates ability for yards after the catch. And it, it does lots of good things. Like, here's Georgia in, you know, they, they come back here and you've got Bell and McConkey, and then you have two tight ends. Both of them are lined up, like, off the line a little bit. So, I mean, they're in more, like, H-back sniffer kind of style positions. And you come straight off that, and then you just, you know, you run outside. Great individual effort by Milton there, not well blocked, but – I love seeing them get into that tight personnel and instead of slamming it up the middle into a a stacked line of scrimmage, send him out around the corner because by being in that tight personnel, you've brought, like if you're going to play in a phone booth like that, you know, like instead of playing in a phone booth, like you're, you're basically, you know, you're putting the defense in a phone booth and then you're, you're running out the, the back door of it. That works really well. That's very good inventive offense. So I liked it. I liked what Georgia did in this game. Um, Good, just good, simple offense there. Uh, We've seen Bowers do that a thousand times. And then, boom, I love this hitter up the middle here on the touchdown. Oh, good, we get a reverse angle on it. So uh, the telestration tells the story, but – this is the pin and pull kind of stuff we're talking about where you got Bowers coming back around, pulling, sealing the backside. 
and then you get these guys. So the telestration is wrong. It should be on Delp going upfield, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just it's a nice concept. And pause it right here. When you add that motion coming across as well, like that's another blocker here. Um, they don't need it in this situation. I mean, AD is just kind of helping block a guy that's already been blocked, but it's a lot of eye candy to deal with for a defense. And Milton does a good job of just getting straight downhill and trust. Like that's a good block by him in the sense that he's not, he's just using his leverage. He's just using angles and space and, understanding how those work and feels like Georgia's not been great at that lately. Uh, you see Fairchild there. He's got a guy like stood up. Um, and then Jared Wilson came in this game late in this uh, first half because a fan Pran tweaked an ankle and he was snapping the ball low at times, but uh, I, I watched him for a little bit. I mean, he wasn't in the game for long, but, he was mauling some folks on some plays like he's they feel very excited about him in terms of what he will be like he will be your starting center next year almost certainly and he's going to be a good one uh here you see him he's he's under center here georgia gets the ball back before half and they throw it up you know that probably should have been oh they got a flag there that's right okay and then you're out here past midfield and they're just going to work the ball to Edwards a couple times. And like, that's, you know, that's, that's honestly very smart in this situation. Just Kentucky is trying to not give up a touchdown before the half. And Georgia is in a position where, uh, it, you know, it doesn't need a touchdown. It'll take more points if it can get it, but a field goal will do just fine. And Beck doesn't force anything downfield into coverage. He doesn't YOLO it. It's just, Nice, easy 10, 12 yard gains, and Georgia kicks a field goal before halftime. <clears throat> All right. Uh, here we go. First play of the second half, you get Milton running downhill. Really nice to see Georgia have some productive stuff up the middle, but like this is, again, gap scheme. You see 69 and 19 pulling right to left. 69 seals and 19 gets gets up and gets one as well and because that space has been created you've got Van Pran and Fairchild there like they have basically gapped up the the A gap and that's a nice 6 yard gain like that you'll take that every time Interesting formation here. Like this is a pistol with Brock Bowers as a basically a pistol fullback and <laughs> Dejan Edwards in a halfback. And you see, right? Like you see what's going on at the top of the screen there. This looks like one of those kind of swing pass plays that Georgia runs where Bowers would come out as a lead blocker for Edwards and Beck would just swing it out to Edwards. And it's there. But instead, you see him going down to the bottom to Ra Ra Thomas, who is one on one. And what does Ra Ra Thomas do when it's one on one? He creates space. What's he doing there? Creating space. Uh, here, you've got Delp pulling across. Looks like another one of these kind of potential uh, pin and pull type concepts. You know, defense isn't sure what they're looking at. You don't actually have a pull, like a, a true pull from the offensive line. You just have Delp and some backfield motion. But just to check down, but like that's what I loved about Beck in this game was he was he was aggressive, but he was he was smartly aggressive. Um, Dylan Bell, man, his feet are insane. This I loved the fake quarterback sneak. It was absolutely sexual. Um, I don't think all the receivers knew what was happening. To be honest with you, some of them look confused. I mean, it might just be something where Carson has the ability to pull it if he wants, but it 
it should have worked. And there was another route underneath that Beck could have thrown a little sooner. Uh, it doesn't really show up on tape, but I noticed it in the stadium. Um, you know, it is what it is. This was his only real bad decision of the night. And there's just too many white jerseys to throw that ball there. I know it's third and 16. Um, but yeah, I mean, it leads to leads to Kentucky's only other touchdown of the game. And he, he kind of stares this one down. Um, you got Dajun there. It's third and 16. Check it down. Or if you're going to go deep into coverage, then, you know, go deep down the boundary to Ra-Ra in a situation where you've got a better chance of him high-pointing the ball and, you know, more of a – probably a safer throw if that goes into the boundary. Run, run, run. Like, good. That's good. It's own run right there. Those guys, you know – that. All your offensive line is basically downfield, five yards finishing. Edwards in space. Edwards in space. Uh, two broken tackles forced there. Really nice. And then Milton, like that's a great run from him, man. That is so – I'm so happy to see that for him. I really am, like, just with what he's been through from a health standpoint. So this is another gap scheme. Here comes Ratledge pulling around, gets his guy, and Trust gets enough of a seal. Well, not really. I mean, he creates space for a moment, but um, Kendall's pushing people. And, you know, we didn't see Georgia's offensive line, like, finishing runs like this much this year to this point. Like, it was nice to see them downfield moving the pile. And then you get Kendall lathered up and – He's going a little bit, like, nice to see him getting some run. Georgia runs a real quarterback sneak now, first and ten. This was insane to watch in person. The way that Bowers turns the corner at his size, it should not be doable. Uh, This was cool. Like, again, Dylan Bell's feet are insane. Uh, he stepped out, but just the ability that he has is legit. And then this, I don't know about this, honestly. The the Bowers Wildcat. I do like that he goes left. Um, right here, there was a moment in the stadium where it seemed like he could have cut upfield. Like, if he didn't try to get the corner, but he follows Fairchild and cuts that, like, just get, get straight north-south, then I think it could have been something. But, look, I'm all for Brack Bowers playing quarterback. Just let him throw next time, Bobo. And then Rosemey almost – and then what I love is that Georgia goes right back to that. Bam. We believe our guy is better than your guy. Actually, we believe both our guys are better than your guy. And they just go right back to the boundary. And that's that's saying quite a lot. And then all of a sudden you got Bowers up the seam. Bing, bang, boom. And now it's 44 to 13, and you are in Brock Vandergriff territory. Um Muse does not get great blocking help there. Gets better blocking help there. Jackson Meeks is a great perimeter blocker, and I think he's a better receiver than most people know. At some point, he's going to do good things for this team. Really nice cut from Cash there. Good vision. Good job getting outside. Like, there's a reason why he's in this offense. Um, Seemed like Lawson Lucky was – Vandergriff's like personal lead blocker on a few plays as being one of them. Uh, not a good drop there. Also not a good pass too high to lucky and too hard. Andrew Paul, uh, you know, he was the buzz of camp last year 
and then tore his ACL. This is good blocking by the second team offensive line. Um, Freeling at left tackle, I thought he looked very good in his time in the game. And uh, Andrew Paul is interesting. He's still learning from a vision standpoint, but you give him a hole that he can hit downhill and he is a load. It's hard not to. I mean, like, physically, he's just very impressive. He's, like, 6'3", and stacked and big. He's going to be a good back. Nice throw there. Not perfect, but nice. And Sperlin is Sperlin is very impressive in person. Like, that dude at 6'7", moves more like a wide receiver than your traditional tight end. I think he's going to be a very good one um yeah paul gets stacked up there and then good catch by anthony evans he's going to be a good one as well do not like this this i'm not sure what vandergriff was trying to do on that throw um like him doing that though. It was a good good play by him to get that outside. So those are your offensive snaps. We'll go through the defense really quick here. Um yeah, you know, early on, uh Kentucky moved the ball pretty well, kind of hurt themselves with penalties. I see like this play just Chambliss, you can't be you can't miss on that. I mean, like, obviously you can because he did. But, I mean, like, just where he is here, the way he jumps inside at the snap, like, there's no reason for him to crash like that. He is not an inside linebacker. You know, there's two inside linebackers right there. He is – where he is is – that's – spot that he's in is supposed to not let anything come around that corner and he bites so hard down that he just gives away all of his leverage and you know he's in a he's in a spot where he can't recover and then he gets beat to the corner and that's the same thing we were just talking about with Georgia right like seven eight yards on first down is good it's good uh good offense it's good to live that way Second and two. Good good coverage by Lasseter. He gave up some plays in this game, but he was a dog. Like, he, he played a lot of tight, hard coverage against good wide receivers. And Kentucky has three good wide receivers. Again, uh, this was disheartening to see, especially after last week. Georgia on defense, you got – So Chambliss is in the slot there, not really a natural position for him, but he's going to get blocked out. Walthour doesn't, you know, properly play down the – you know what, actually it looks like he's supposed to be there. He's more in like a four-eye situation. Um, Mondin does not beat that pull. And so he gets – obliterated on this play, but um, Georgia doesn't really crash down super well from the secondary either. I mean, Chambliss ends up making that tackle, but just not what you want to see early in the game. And Kentucky's offensive line is good for the record. I mean, like, they're they're going to hit some plays on you. You just would like to see someone get into the lane and at least force the running back to make a cut or something. Um, here, you know, cut back lane. Like they, like I said, they were, they were running this gap scheme stuff and they were gashing Georgia early aggressive. And I think Georgia does a better job here of seeing the pulls coming and taking those on head on instead of kind of waiting for them to get there. But, you know, Dumas Johnson gets gets beat here, and yeah. OK, 
good coverage down the downfield there to kind of force that throw away. And then this is better, right? Like this is this is better. Georgia's in. I mean, it's easier to play defense in second and twenty, obviously, but um, Lassiter. He's a great coverage corner. He's the best coverage corner Georgia's got, but he doesn't get enough credit for how he plays the run. He plays the run really well, and his leverage is almost always good. Michael does a good job here. Like, he doesn't make the play, but he, you know, gets out there and disrupts things and kind of strings them out. Um, and then, you know, Lasseter plays good leverage on that as well. Safety's closed. All that stuff. This was the play that really, you know, I mean, this could have changed the game significantly. Uh, just a miss here by by Tyke and coverage, I believe, unless Dalen was supposed to have that guy, but uh, that wouldn't make sense, truthfully. Um, if Kentucky hits that; it's probably a touchdown. Uh, you know, it's close to it at least. It's second and seven here. Yeah, this was kind of the one spot. I mean, Lasseter just gets beat straight up. He gets beat on this kind of uh, sort of corner route sort of style. Um, I mean, it happens, especially against wide receivers that athletic. This That was a missed switch by Everett. Um, it was pretty obvious in the stadium. You could see, like, he doesn't know where he's supposed to be exactly. Um, Kirby kind of pulled him aside and talked to him after that play. Not great. Great job here by Chambliss. This is what, you know, Georgia adjusted well to some of that, that gap scheme. So, like, what are your, you know, if you're, if you've got this gap scheme stuff going on, then you got to shoot it. And Chambliss shoots it right here. Um, does a great job getting off the edge. It's a fantastic play. Takes on the pull. And the, the reason he wins against that pull is because he beats that guy to that spot. Like he's, you know, that, that guard is taking him on not square. Um, he's, you know, he's not turning and hitting him at a 90 degree angle. Poor job here. Kentucky does this a lot against Georgia. They take advantage of the aggressiveness of Georgia's defense. These kind of throwback screens. Um, I think that's Tykee. Yeah, Tykee flies in there a little too fast. Um, you know, it's good that he's getting upfield, but he's – he basically runs himself into a block. Yeah, yeah. Good. I mean, look, there's times where good offense just beats good defense. This is kind of one of those times. This is, no one does anything wrong here. Not bad coverage by Starks. He's just a split second late, but he sees the play coming and breaks on the ball. It's just a good play by Kentucky. And you got to live with that sometimes. Um, that probably could have been an interception. Maybe should have been an interception. Not should have, but. Under a lot of circumstances, that's that's going to end up an interception. Good pressure here by Brinson. I think this was the play where they threw the the flag, which was bullshit in my opinion. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, that didn't make sense. Not really Georgia forcing that incompletion there. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a quick slant, quick throw. It's not well delivered. Everett's not in bad position, but he's not in, he's not beating that receiver to the spot on that play either. He's not like, you know, I mean, he's he actually gets turned around pretty good there. Um, the guy doesn't catch the ball, but if it's a well delivered pass, then it's going to be a different kind of play. Second and ten. Yeah, so, like, this is what I'm talking about. This is really – Dumas Johnson played really well on Saturday. Um, 
I think, you know, Kirby mentioned after the game that he's been a little dinged up, which checks out. But this is a great kind of fill by him. But the edge just doesn't do it for me here. You know, like, Walthour does a good job getting upfield. And, you know, that's what he's supposed to be doing. But Mondin, he probably gets hold, held there, to be honest with you. But um, that just wasn't a great – wasn't great technique there, in my opinion. Um, got a blitz here. Leary can't connect. They go for it on fourth and three. And they get it. Let's see, who is that on? I mean, these are kind of one of these, like, rubber out sort of scenarios. Yeah, that's – honestly, that's offensive pass interference. Number seven runs straight smack into Bullard. That's bullshit. They should have – as many flags as this crew threw on everything else, I'm surprised they didn't throw on here. He did a good job. That Kentucky receiver did turning around, putting his hands out, and sticking his ass out. That's why they didn't throw a flag. Actually, give him credit. That's a pretty savvy way of doing that. Then you get the throwback here. Um, Kentucky runs this play against Georgia every year. Not a great job there by Michael. You know, Michael. It's not that he's like struggling. But he doesn't seem quite as impactful as he did a lot of times last year. And I think a lot of that probably has – you know, he was dinged up in camp and stuff. I'm not sure if he's totally 100% himself physically. But um seems like he, you know, still has some, some work to iron out. Just a bad – I mean, it's – it's a bad throw, but it's good pressure. I think that's Dumas Johnson coming up the gut. Armandin. Yeah, that's smile. Good job by Mondin. He makes that play. Cut back lanes, cut back lanes, cut back lanes. Don't you leave your cut back lane. Um, look, man, how many times do I got to say it? Chaz Chambliss, stop biting inside so hard. Um, yeah. Walt Hour, I'm not sure where he's supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, Tramiel's not in the wrong spot here. Like, because this, I mean, he's, he's trying, it's his job to go make a tackle, right? Um, but, yeah, I mean, Princeton shoots too far. Like, that's, it's, Princeton goes a little crazy on that, you know. Uh, what he's really good at is shooting gaps, so it's hard to, hard to be upset with him when he does that, but. He's got to be a little more gap responsible because he gets upfield so far. And then Chambliss is, Chambliss is blocked inside as well. So um, Georgia's defensive line play, guys, not very good uh, in this game, straight up. Like, it just wasn't. Uh, yeah, you see they kind of slant here. Like, you see Brinson shoot. And then Chaz, I mean, he's just getting his – He's just getting beat one on one, but like he jumps inside into that block instead of, you know, setting that outside and understanding that he's got good players behind him that are going to come down and make that play. Like, you know, I, I think these defensive linemen, they're both trying too hard to make plays and also like not you know, if, if you're going to tr go make a play on the defensive line that takes you out of your space and your lane and your assignment, then you better damn sure make it because otherwise you're kind of hanging other guys out to dry. And these guys on the edges, like it's their job to go take on some of these pulls, but 
um, on some of these like run plays where, you know, Kentucky's just running straight zone, like nothing fancy. They're just blocking the guy in front of them. And these guys are dipping way inside trying to chase a running back who is faster and more athletic than them. Like if you're going to do that, then go blow them up in the backfield. Don't get yourself out of position. And then all of a sudden, you know, Georgia's kind of in trouble because you're not there to sort of help string a run out or corral guys and let other red jerseys rally to the football. Uh, Rare to say that Starks gets beat, but Starks gets beat right there by the tight end for that touchdown. Leary. Uh, this play was frustrating, man. I was watching it like Leary this entire time. Like Chaz, you see him, he creeps out in coverage here. And like th- it, this is straight like ball you man type shit. It is on him to be between Leary and that receiver. And like this should be a pick. If this ball is getting thrown with him in this assignment, in that zone, this should be a pick. And he just runs himself out of the play. Um, I mean, he's right there to make it and just doesn't know where the guy is. Just doesn't know where Dan Key is. I think that was Dan Key. Um, Good coverage by Kamari there. Should have been a pick, honestly, or offensive pass interference because he just, like, mugs him but it wasn't um i don't know what to think of that it's hard sometimes to know exactly what devin leary's doing this play was to me this is the corner blitz with kamari and you know i mean it's it's not some uh, corner blitz often sounds like exotic or uh risky it's not exotic to run a corner blitz when that corner is not covering anybody um at least not in man to man i mean like yes you are taking him out of his own but like this play it almost felt like one that georgia wouldn't normally kind of burn in a game like this but i think they were so frustrated with not getting to leary and him sitting back there all day that they were finally all right you know what? We're going to run it and good stunt by Jalen Walker. Like all of this is good. Good, good stuff by uh Lasseter, obviously coming off the corner, but Dumas Johnson was super productive in his pressure package situations in this game. I mean, he gets right through that a gap and blows up Devin Leary. That's good stuff. Jalen Walker in on the edge there on first and 10. That is, I would just say that's interesting. Um, I personally think that he has the skills that he could potentially play there three downs. Um, Obviously, we know they like to play him there as a pass rusher on third downs. There he is at second and ten. or I'm sorry, second and eight. Walker's in. Doesn't have to do anything. This is not a play where he's rushing the passer. He's dropping out in the coverage. He's the rat hole. But, um, yeah. It's good. It's good to see him on the field. And then third down. There he's coming off the corner. And this is almost a really nice ball from Leary. That's good coverage by Tyke Smith. Like he's he's in good spot there. First and ten. Um, I don't know. You're just not really used to seeing Georgia get like just like hit for five yards on first and ten on just like a straight zone like Kentucky's at the second level and they've got this blocked up pretty well I mean they've got both inside linebackers engaged by an offensive lineman it's I mean like Georgia's good at not giving their space away you know like you don't see them getting pancaked or anything like that but um it's interesting to you know like that's happening more this year than I think in the last two years combined. Um, this defensive line's just not very impactful in the middle. And uh, 
they're going to have to figure out a solution there. That, this was a good play by Chaz, okay? I, you know, I gave him shit earlier for being lost in coverage, but, like, you could almost see him. I was watching him on this play, and you could tell that he could tell that the ball was about to come his way. And at one point, like, he almost, I think, kind of panics a little bit, but he doesn't, and he gets his head back around, and he plays the football. And he does a good job. He's, you know, he doesn't hold or commit a pass interference and he's playing up against a bigger tight end it's a good job by him third and five jalen walker pressure could have been a hold wasn't good job by uh good job by um dumas johnson in coverage here watch jdj number 10 he's gonna follow that I believe that's the back. Yeah, he's following the, the back out of the backfield. And he's in the right spot. So, good job by him. So, this is better. This is better from Georgia's defensive line. This is a lot better. Um, who do we got here? We got Stackhouse in the middle. I think that's Logue. We got Michael at one end and Kristen Miller, I believe that is at the, the top of the line. So Miller is taking some space from that guy on the, the right guard. Kentucky's pulling here. Yeah, Miller's actually up on the center. And Kentucky's pulling. Michael gets there beats the block to the space he gets knocked back but like he's you know he he's doing enough and then stackhouse and logue they're getting some penetration not a ton but like that's good that's good run defense it's better run defense um i think that that's encouraging and look, Georgia only gave up like 55 yards rushing in this game if you include sack yardage. I think like 89 if you take out the sack yardage. It's not like they got gashed on the run, but um, they are just more, I'll say it, they're just a little more average looking there than they ever were in years past. Poor tackling by Dalen Everett there. Very poor tackling by Dalen Everett. Um, I mean, Georgia – don't get me wrong, like this is there's a lot of over pursuit happening here, but if you're gonna play for Kirby Smart, you've got to make that tackle. Okay, this is a bad angle. Dumas Johnson, uh he gets sucked out of this play. Like it's a great play call by Liam Cohen in this situation, by the way. Liam Cohen. Um He's a stud. I like him. He's a very good offensive coordinator. He does good things. He gets the most out of his personnel, but Dalen Everett's got to make that tackle. Um, Kentucky runs the ball here, which Kentucky running the ball on a two-point conversion against Georgia is just – it's almost kind of disrespectful in a way. I mean, it's not really, but you know what I'm saying. Like, it's not something you would expect. Um, Zion Logue, look at the penetration there, 96, making that happen. He's uh, he's had a very good year so far. Um, he's not really built like a true nose, but every time they play him like a, you know, more shaded towards the zero than the three, because um, he's more he's built like a three tech, not a zero tech. But like right here, he is in zero tech spot. He is playing nose tackle. He is nose on nose on the center. And he whips the center. Not whips him, but like he pushes he knocks him off the ball and it disrupts the run. And it's it's a failed two point conversion try because of it. So credit to him. Uh here comes another gap scheme. Stackhouse. Uh that's Miller, actually. Miller, good job by Miller getting under and let's see. Kristen Miller is fifty two. He is lined up 
Uh, Stackhouse is kind of – him and Stackhouse are both lined up as defensive tackles. Miller is above Stackhouse on your screen. Stackhouse is 78, Miller is 52. And Miller is just going to – he's going to hold his space and then he's going to dip and dive and make that tackle while he's being partially held. Let's see that again. That was nice. We'll watch it at full speed now. Yeah, that's that's the stuff right there. That kid's gonna be he's he's gonna be somebody. Um not sure exactly what happened there. Did someone get a piece of that? Maybe Oh, looks like Nazir Stackhouse got a piece of that. Good job by him. Maybe, I think. It looks like he got a piece of it. Third and eight. Georgia's bringing the house again. Sack lunch, baby. Dumas Johnson hitting that A-gap. He's really good at timing those blitzes. You can find anybody that will just run up, you know, just to run up the middle, but he times those blitzes very well. And not a good job there by... Who was that? Granted, it is 44 to 13 at this point, so... You know. Did it really matter? Probably not. Jamel Walther. He's coming inside. And Stackhouse is trying to string it out. CJ Allen is getting held and then blocked to the ground. I don't know. Um, it's not really a bad job. It's just not a very good job by anybody. A pretty routine play there. First and ten. Good defense. Sorry is coming on strong. Um, he still has some moments of head scratching, but he's getting there, man. He is getting there. That was nice. Gabe Harris is going to be a monster. Uh, I think that's him and Kristen Miller uh, lined up there. Yeah, 29 and 52. Look at 29, get off and get in the backfield. And then you've got – I'm not sure who that was. I mean, it's hard. To, I can't tell who that was. Oh, it was a – that wasn't – Oh, okay. That's Jonathan Jefferson, 94. Look at that. That's a great move. That's just kind of swim moves in there, makes that tackle. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. Um, he's going to be a good one. He's exciting. Good job by Julian Humphrey coming in at corner and making that tackle. I like Humphrey's game a lot. That's the Jalen Walker. I mean, that's why everyone's like, why don't they move Jalen Walker to edge permanently? He should play at edge. Well, look at what he – look at the potential that he has at inside linebacker. Look at this shit. That is some freaking rock-solid pursuit right there. It's hard to teach. Jordan Hall in there, number 44. We got Jalen bringing guys down again. Man, just – this was kind of the Jalen Walker – series here um that's cool though right on he's inside linebacker chase you know the play before jalen walker is an inside linebacker chasing down a running back like just perfectly and then the very next play he puts a move on a blocker in space gets a sack coming off the edge that's rad uh Poor job there by Dan Jackson. Let's see. Humphrey's in on this play as well. Uh, he just comes in from the secondary. But, yeah, that's why he's not playing. I mean, some of the reason why, I would have to imagine. It's just that's not very good tackling against the run. Nothing terrifies a Kirby Smart defense from a personnel standpoint more than corners who can't help and run support, as it should. That's how big plays get busted. Um, 
It's good getting a look at some of these young guys. Yeah, you get Hall on the end there. Raylan Wilson, Aguero. No, it's Aguero. Um, another good penetration by Jonathan Jefferson here, honestly. Like him and Jordan Tall Hall are an interesting duo at defensive tackle. I mean, both those guys are blowing shit up. I mean, that's that's nice. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see Georgia uh, as they move into the Vanderbilt game and then the bye week, and then get ready for Florida and the closing stretch of the season. Will they go with any different personnel in some of these spots? Like I could see them maybe deciding, Hey, you know, on the defensive line, like we're, you know, we're holding our space on most plays right now, but we're not getting any havoc. Like, I don't think the starting defensive line had a single pass rush pressure on Saturday night. I know that they didn't actually, that included Michael. Um, they they couldn't get pressure with four in this game. And at some point they got to be able to do that. So will you see them maybe defer to some younger, more talented players somewhere in here and, um, you know, start, start kind of trying to put like high ceiling over high floor in certain situations from a personnel standpoint. I don't know. I don't know, but this is definitely, I mean, this game was by far the best offensive performance of the season. Defense didn't play bad. They just didn't play like, you know, it's not that they didn't force a bunch of turnovers or anything like that. It's just like there were, felt like there were plays that were left out there for Kentucky that better teams will make. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if there's an offense that really scares you on this schedule until, well, you got Mizzou. Mizzou will come into town the week after Florida. That, that offense has been playing well. And, you know, they gave Georgia a big game last year, but um, you know, the week after that is Ole Miss and that one will be very interesting as well. So um, thank you guys for tuning in as always really appreciate what you guys are doing in terms of consuming this content. Uh, look, if you're watching this show and you're into this type of stuff, you should be subscribed to dogcentral.com, plain and simple. Um, deep dive analysis is for you, and that is what we do. So uh, I hope we will see you there. Really appreciate you guys supporting us if you can. Um, only six ninety nine a month, and there is all of the Georgia intel that you could possibly want as well. So appreciate you guys and i hope you have a good rest of your week we will see you back next week and we'll have some uh some more kind of uh traditional podcast content uh later in the week as well just talking georgia football and college football on the whole so hope you guys will consume that also thank you <laughs>